All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 14. And in this lesson, students are gonna be continuing to compare fractions. Only this time, we're adding some new techniques. Not only are we using benchmarks, but we're also using logic. Uh, we're also going to be using common denominators or common units. Um, we're also not only going to be talking about common denominators, but we're also adding the technique of common numerators, which are just as helpful as common denominators. So let's get started on that. So this problem, it doesn't say so specifically, but this is really talking about common numerators. The idea being it says, would you rather have two-fourths or two-sixths, for example? And the idea is we want students to recognize that if we were to have the same sized whole and we were to cut this into fourths and we were to cut this into sixths, we can see that when you cut things into a larger denominator, larger unit sizes, uh, that the sizes themselves, I mean, a uh, larger number of units, that the sizes themselves become smaller. So sixths are smaller than fourths because you cut it into more pieces, so the pieces become smaller. So the idea becomes, well, would you rather have two large pieces or two small pieces? And that's the kind of logic that students are going to use when they're comparing fractions that, in the, like in this case, they have the same number of numerators, the same numerator, in this case it was two-fourths or two-sixths, and then you can reason um, the comparison based on the size of the denominators, uh, you know, the size of the individualized pieces. Similarly, here you got five eighths, you've got five tenths. So which fraction is going to have this, the larger individual sized pieces? Well, the eighths are going to be larger than the tenths because our whole number is cut into eight pieces versus 10 pieces. So would you rather have 5 eighths or 5 tenths? And of course the answer is 5 eighths is going to be larger than 5 tenths. So that's the idea of this series of problems. Now here we're going to take that same idea and we're going to just make it a little bit more mathematical. Uh, when we can straight up compare, we're going to do so. So 3 sixths versus 3 sevenths. Well, we know 3 sixths are larger than 3 sevenths because sixths each individual sixth is a little bit larger than each individual seventh. And that's how we're going to compare. Same kind of concept uh, down here. We're able to compare 3 elevenths with 3 thirteenths right off the bat. And we can immediately see that 3 elevenths is larger than 3 thirteenths. Now, these guys over here, we're going to do a little bit of um, math mathematizing, I suppose, because we don't have any common numerators. We have 5 sevenths and 10 thirteenths. But if we take that 5 sevenths and we can chop it up into seven equal sized pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, and then if we take and then shade in five of them, so one, two, three, four, but then, here's the cool thing, if we cut each of those pieces in half, instead of having five sevenths, we now have ten fourteenths. And that really makes sense because we know that five times two is ten and seven times two is is 14 and in previous lessons in this module we learned how to take a fraction and rename it simply by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number and in this case it's 2. So now we see that 5 sevenths can be thought of as 10 fourteenths and now 10 fourteenths and 10 thirteenths is really easy to compare and we know that 10 thirteenths is going to be larger than 10 fourteenths, so our sign is going to be this way. And, and parents and teachers, this is a perfect example why we want to use something other than the traditional common denominators, because finding a common denominator for 7 and 13 is kind of a gross 
<laughs> problem, but finding a common numerator, in this case 10, is much easier. So we want to teach our students as many tricks as, you know, tools, useful tricks as they can. So here we're going to specifically draw two tape diagrams to model. So we're going to make sure that our hole in both cases is the exact same. So here we go. And we have 3 fourths and 7 twelfths. So we're going to begin by cutting this into 3 fourths, and, and then, or fourths. And then down here, I'm going to cut it into twelfths. And that's really easy, because I'm going to start with the fourths, but then just cut each one of those into 3. And that gives me 12. And now if we're going to shade it in, 3 fourths is going to look like this. 3 fourths. And then 7 twelfths is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we can see dot, 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 that 3 fourths is larger than 7 twelfths. Now, uh, draw two tape diagrams, model each pair of the following fractions with related denominators. So the idea is, um, if we wanted to figure out how to get common denominators, well, we could, let's see, I'm going to use, oh, I'll use the black, and then we could take these fourths and we can cut each one of these into pieces. And so what we'll see is we can see that three-fourths, instead of thinking of three-fourths, we could think of this as one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can th think of that as nine-twelfths. So now it's easy to compare 9 twelfths with 7 twelfths, right? So really, what did we do? Well, we took 3 fourths, and then we multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by 3. And that's how we ended up getting 9 twelfths. Now, comparing, instead of comparing 3 fourths with 7 twelfths, we're going to compare 9 twelfths with 7 twelfths, because it's the same thing. These guys are the same thing. And so we can easily see that 9 twelfths is greater than 7 twelfths. How did we do that? Well, we started by drawing pictures, then we renamed one of those fractions, and confirmed our suspicions. Here it says draw one number line to model each pair of fractions. So parents and teachers, what you're going to want to do, just to simplify your life a little bit, is take the fraction that has the smaller numbers. So in this case, it would be 3 fourths versus 5 eighths. Not saying that 3 fourths is smaller than 5 eighths. I'm just saying it's using the smaller digits. Same thing here. 3 fourths is using the smaller digits than 11 twelfths. So my recommendation is you start by modeling that number, the one that has the smaller digits. So 3 fourths is going to live right here. Now, to model the three uh, 5 eighths on the same number line, well, we have four pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's because there's 3 fourths. Now we need eight pieces because the fraction is 5 eighths. So, how do we take this, this line and turn it into having eight pieces? Well, you cut each one of those four pieces into halves, uh, in half, into two pieces. So now we have eighths. And if we want to know where five eighths is, it's zero, and then it's one, two, three eighths, four eighths is right in the middle, and then five eighths. So five eighths is right here. So now we know that three fourths is larger than five eighths because it's to the right. So then little symbol is going to look like that. Similarly, if we wanted to do uh, this problem here, I highly recommend parents and teachers, let's model the three-fourths first. So three-fourths is going to go right there. Now in order to model that eleven-twelfths, how do we turn these four pieces into 12 pieces, and that's pretty easy. It's, we're going to cut 
each of these fourths into three pieces, we now have twelfths. And if we wanted to, we could count, and we'd see, oh, there's twelve pieces. And then we want to count over eleven of those. So you start here at zero, and you go one, two, three elevenths, no, uh, three twelfths, I mean, four, five, six twelfths, that's right in the middle, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven twelfths. So eleven twelfths is right there, and now we know that eleven twelfths is larger than three fourths because it's to the right of three fourths. So, so far, none of this is really using that standard algorithm of getting a common denominator, but it's leading us to that point where here we get to use common denominators if we want. For example, I really see this is an easy one. I see that seven, the denominators are 7 and 14, and it's really easy to take a 7 and turn that into a denominator of 14 by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So now you get 10 fourteenths. So really, instead of thinking of this as 5 sevenths, we can think of it as, we can think of it as 10 fourteenths. So now it's really easy to compare 11 fourteenths with 10 fourteenths, because we know that 11 fourteenths is clearly bigger than 10 fourteenths. And that means 11 fourteenths is larger than 5 sevenths, because they're the same. 5 sevenths and 10 fourteenths are the same thing. So that's the idea of this series of problems here, is now we're just going to use all of our tricks, all of the tools that our students have been taught, and they can use either common denominators. This is another example of a good one for common denominators. Or they can use common numerators, uh, like this one is a common numerators, because you already have them. Um, or you could just use plain old logic here. One-seventh is smaller than two-sevenths because of plain old logic. Um, of course, if students want, they can continue using that number line and they can graph everything on the number line as well. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 14. Uh, we're using common denominators. We're using common numerators in order to compare fractions.